Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for all your children. I pray for all your people. You will do something unforgettable. And as we come today, we are asking everything, anything that ought to be done in our lives, you will do. Bring us into intimate and close fellowship with you today in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you will cancel, demolish, and destroy anything and everything that will stand between us and you. And confirm your word in every life today in Jesus' name. We receive the answer. We receive the solution. We pray, Lord, you make us understand what you are speaking to us today. And make us doers of the word. And this word will profit everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Wonderful amen, another amen. Yeah. God bless you, you can sit down. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning. We each we have heard. We each we have seen with our own eyes. We each have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. You see what John the Apostle is saying? Something practical, something definite. It's not an hearsay. It's not they told me and I'm telling you. They said it. I am putting my voice to it. It said we saw. We heard. We listened. We handled. We experienced. We got it. And it said that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which came into our lives, the very word of life that turned our lives around, a very definite thing, a very practical thing, a purposeful thing, a profitable thing that happened unto us when we had fellowship with him that we come to declare to you. You have no right to declare what you have not seen and to tell what you have not heard and to express to other people and bring them into something you have never experienced yourself. You need the experience before you verbalize and give the expression, experience of salvation before you can explain that salvation to others. Experience of sanctification before you can bring others into that experience. Experience of continual walk with the Lord before you yourself can now bring other people to that experience of the world. Head knowledge is not enough. Heart experience that you know that Christ is alive, that you know you've got this from him only then do you have the right to tell other people, here is it, I got it, you can get it too. You will get it in Jesus' name. In verse 4, these things write we unto you. These things speak we unto you. 
These things declare we unto you that your joy may be full. How that tells us of the purpose of ministry. The reason for ministry. The reason why we stand here and declare anything unto you. The reason we go there outside and declare anything unto them. For this reason, these things we write unto you, we declare unto you, we preach unto you, we teach you, and we expose to you for one reason only, that you will have joy, joy of salvation, that you will have joy, joy of solution to your problem, that you will have joy, joy of being intimate in relationship with God, that you will have joy, the joy of the blessing of God, that you will have joy and that your joy may be full. If you are in any fellowship that decreases your joy, any fellowship that totally obliterates and cancels your joy, you're trying to get into fellowship with somebody. You've had joy before, happiness before, gladness before. And you're coming close to this person. It's decreasing your joy. It's bringing confusion to your life. Check up that thing. Whatever we say unto you, this we write unto you. That you may have fellowship with us. And truly, a fellowship is with the Father and the Son. And when that fellowship really takes place, there will be joy. And there will be fullness of joy. Verse 5, this then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you, John is saying, we declare nothing to you that we didn't hear from him. In the local church, anywhere you are, and you are preaching, you declare nothing. You declare nothing that you have not heard from him. You have heard it. You have embraced it. You have accepted it. It has benefited your life. And now you are telling others, we declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. No spot of darkness. No dot of darkness. Nothing of darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we we'll lie and do not the truth. The saying is not what you say. It's how your life comes out. It's not what you preach. It's how your life comes out. It is not the testimony you give. It is the test of character. That your character, your utterance, your testimony matches what you say. But if we walk in the light, consistently in the light, constantly in the light, purposefully in the light, if we walk in the light, one step after the other, one decision after the other, we're living, we're walking, we're conducting our lives in the light as he is don't compare your walk with abraham with moses with joshua with david with solomon as he is in the light without any shadow of darkness at all if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, keeps us clean, continually cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin to be cleansed, it's talking about the one 
that is just coming into fellowship with the Lord. And he says, take me as I am. I'm all right. There's no sin. I do not partake of the depravity that came on Adam and Eve. I am pure by myself. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins when we come to the knowledge of the truth, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us. He will do it for you. From all unrighteousness. At that time, when you are cleansed from all unrighteousness, you can say, verse 8, I have no sin. Not from the beginning of my life, but from the point that he touched my life, cleansed my life, forgave my life, and set me free. But you cannot say, I have never sinned since I was born. Verse 10. If we say, we have not sinned since we were born, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us his word will prevail in every one of our hearts in jesus name today we're looking at this chapter and we're talking on the believer's commitment to fellowship with god the believer's commitment to fellowship with god there are three things we're looking at number one is the foundation the foundation of eternal fellowship with God. It has to have a foundation. You're having fellowship with God. When you were born into this world, you had no relationship with God. You were born in sin and you lived in sin. A sinner by nature, a sinner by practice, a point comes in your life. When you are called into fellowship with God, the foundation of eternal fellowship with God. Point number two, the formality of empty fellowship of the godless. The formality, the sage, the verbalize it. They put it into words. I'm in fellowship with God. I'm a child of God. I love God. There is no proof. There's no evidence. They say they have fellowship with God and they walk in darkness. The formality of the empty fellowship of the godless. Point number three. The freedom of enduring fellowship of the godly. The one who has come into the kingdom. And the one that really loves the Lord and is walking step by step, step by step in the way of righteousness. He has such a freedom in enduring fellowship because he is godly. Let's look at number one. Number one, the foundation of eternal fellowship with God. I read from verse 3 that which we have seen we saw the savior we saw the giver of eternal life we saw what he brought from heaven the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that he also that you also there comes a time in your life, a point in your life, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, a fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. How did they come into fellowship with the Lord? How did they come into this intimacy with the Lord? We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 
I'm reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful. And the way we were called into fellowship is that he brought us in into relationship with Christ. He became our Savior. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 37. Now, when they had this, they were preached in their heart. Not in their head, not in their stomach, this is not emotional, this is not head knowledge, this is not sense knowledge, this is not tradition, this is not religious feeling. They were preached in their hearts, their consciences condemned them. They knew they were sinners. They knew they had gone astray, and it dawned on them suddenly, we have not done right. And it says, they were pricked in their heart, and they said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Can we do anything about this? We know we are sinners. We know we have gone astray. We know we have offended the Lord. We know our sins separate us from the Lord. Can we come to him and become intimate in fellowship? Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unto what generation? Then they that gladly received his word repent, they agreed. There is no fellowship without agreement. God says you are guilty. Agree. There is no fellowship without agreement. God says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Agree. There is no fellowship without agreement. God says my only begotten son is the one I have given. And he is the only savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus, turn away from your sin. Agree, there is no fellowship without agreement. And so they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They didn't say, we don't want doctrine. We don't want teaching. We don't want exhortation. Just give all this floppy fellowship. Just give all this sliming or sliding fellowship. Just give us this make-believe fellowship. Just let's be one. Let's agree together that we are working together. Keep the Bible to yourself. Keep the word to yourself. Keep righteousness to yourself. Keep holiness to yourself. Just give us this slimy fellowship that doesn't lead us anywhere. They continued personally on their own in the apostles' doctrine that revealed who God is, what God does, and how we maintain fellowship with the Lord. They continue the apostles' doctrine and fellowship 
and fellowship you will continue and then it says i'm breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul they were washed from their sins and he came into fellowship with the savior with the lord and that's how it happens today you repent of sin that's the foundation you believe on the lord jesus christ that's the foundation and you continue in righteousness by the grace that came into your life that is the fellowship you'll be in fellowship with the lord second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure i mean fellowship with god as a foundation nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure i've been the seal it is sealed that foundation and you cannot change it you cannot remove the seal it has the seal the lord knows them that are is let everyone that names the name of christ depart from iniquity let everyone that names the name of christ depart from secret iniquity iniquity in the dark iniquity in your community iniquity when men are not there when neighbors are not there iniquity when brethren are not there in your office the foundation that you are in fellowship with the lord is that you have departed from iniquity verse 22 flee also youthful lusts you're in fellowship with the lord flee youthful lusts but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord out of a pure heart i pray if you have not established this foundation in your personal christian life you'll establish that foundation today in jesus name if the foundation is shaking and wobbling as if there is something threatening the foundation of your fellowship it will be reaffirmed and reconfirmed today in jesus name the foundation of eternal fellowship with god point number two the formality of the empty fellowship of the godless we're coming back to first john and i'm reading here from verse five and verse six the formality of the empty fellowship of the godless look at verse five this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness and live in darkness and still abide in darkness we we'll lie and we do not the truth but you know god is light god is also love look at that at those verses or the understanding of god is love this thing is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is love and in him is no hatred at all if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in hatred we we'll lie and do another truth fellowship with god 
clears hatred away from our lives. And if you're saying, if you're giving testimony, I'm a child of God, I have fellowship with God, and you have bitterness and hatred in your heart, you lie and you do know the truth. Understand, God is light, God is love, God is holy. Look at this, verse 5, this then is the message we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is holy and in him is no sin at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in sin and live in sin, we lie and we do not the truth. When you come into fellowship with the Lord, he deals with the sin problem. There are two areas of sin. Number one, the inherited sin. Number two, the committed sin. It's like you have a tree. The branches are the open things you see about the tree. But the roots are the things you don't see. And the branches visible, touchable, practical, that you can see, those are like the committed sins on the outside. And then the root, that's like the inbred sin deep down in the heart, in the soul. And Christ has come, number one, to forgive and to set us free from the open sin, all those works of the flesh. He takes them away, salvation. And then he comes again and he sanctifies us and he removes the root of sin. Now, this then is the message we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is holy and in him is no sin at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in sin, or lie, and do not the truth. He's pure to Look at this. This is the message that we have heard of him. And this is the message we're declaring to the church that God is pure, or purer eyes than to behold iniquity. And that there is no impurity in him at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in impurity, we lie and do not the truth. As we look at the Bible, this is what we know. Verse 5 This then is the message we've heard of him. And this is the message we're declaring to you that God is just, He is impartial. God is just in all His ways, in all His works, in all His endeavors, in all His plans. God is just, and in Him is no injustice at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in injustice, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 5, this then is the message we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is true. God is true. His truthfulness personified. There is nothing false in him. God is true. And there is no falsehood in him at all. If we say, if you say you have fellowship with him and walk in falsehood and walk in lying, and walk in hypocrisy, 
you lie and do not the truth this is the message we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is faithful always always faithful and that there is no unfaithfulness in him if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in unfaithfulness we we'll lie and do not the truth there are people that are formal in their profession of fellowship with God I know God I love God I follow God I'm living for God but they do not have the attributes and the characteristics of God and the Word of God says they lie and they do not the truth second Timothy I'm reading from chapter 3 second Timothy chapter 3 I'm going to verse 5 but I'm going to start from verse 1 Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come For men shall be lovers of their own selves Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers Disobedient to parents, unthankful unholy and these are religious people and they say they have fellowship with God and they continue in all these things they lie and do not the truth verse 3 without natural affection even the natural love that should appear and that should be manifested by natural people they say they know the Lord they say they are saved and they have gone beyond the natural people they don't even have the natural affection the truth breakers the false accusers they're incontinent they're fears fears the frightening people there's no fellowship there there is no fright frightening or fear in fellowship Christ did not come to make people fear him. They touched him. They came to him. He had compassion on them. But the people who are fierce, who are tyrants, they don't have fellowship even with ordinary men, not to talk of having fellowship with God. Despisers of those that are good, traitors, Heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, formality, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, tell me what to do, tell me out aloud as a believer. We ought to be watchful. Open your eyes and see. Fellowship, fellowship. Come into fellowship with this. And they're lovers of their own selves. You come into fellowship with this. And they're injurious. They want to take away from you the good thing you have. Fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. They hold on to their things. And they want to waste your life. And it says, from such, turn away. It's the word of God. It's not a kind of floppy fellowship, a make-believe fellowship, a pretending fellowship, an hypocritical fellowship. It calls you into fellowship with God first. And whatever other fellowship will not match and agree with fellowship with God from such turn away. Titus chapter 1, verse 1.
verse 16 Titus chapter 1 verse 16 they profess that they know God when fellowship with God is only formality when fellowship with God is only head knowledge when fellowship with God is only church attendance they profess that they know God but in works they deny him in works they deny him in character they deny him at home with their wives or their husbands they deny him at home in the office in their places of work they deny him worship finishes with them on sunday and whatever they heard on sunday does not have any impact in their lives during the week in works in character in behavior in lifestyle in their operations in their workplace they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate the lord is saying such people do not have real fellowship with god you will not be like that at home you continue in obedience to the word of god in jesus name in your places of work you will not come into agreement with the people who are stealing company money office money government money in jesus name you will distinguish yourself that although there are church goers there and those church goers they do anything and everything from fraud to corruption you will not be part of that i was waiting for a good amen, amen. second kings chapter 17 second kings chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 33. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 33. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. You see that? They feared the Lord. When a thunder strikes, they say, Oh God, they fear the Lord. When it's lightning, they say, Oh God, they fear the Lord. When they suddenly get into a kind of a pit hole on the road, they say, oh God, they fear the Lord. When they say they're praying, remove the cross, remove the yoke, oh God, oh God, oh God, they fear the Lord. But after that expression of fearing God, it says they search their own gods. There's occultism in their lives. the civil power in their life. They know how to curse people and how to lay injury on them spiritually. They know how to send attack to somebody, how to send affliction to somebody. They know in their evil power, occultic power, how to make somebody sick. And yet, they fear the Lord. If they continue like that, on the one hand, in fellowship with Satan, on the other hand, on Sunday, they try to be in fellowship with God. If anybody dies in that condition, he will go to a burning lake of fire, hell fire, forever and ever. I pray it will not be your Lord. But you must repent. You must repent. You will not say, you have a testimony, I love God, I fellowship with God, and you are a tyrant. And you are a fearsome person, fierce. And you are an occultic man, occultic woman, and you have covenant with evil spirit and evil power and the powers of darkness. It doesn't match. If you are going to be in fellowship with God, cut it straight for 33. They feared the Lord 
and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Verse 34. Unto this day they do after their former manners. That means their pretended fellowship is just formality. It doesn't have the assurance of the Spirit of God or the affirmation of Scripture. Until this day, they do after their former manners, they fear not the Lord. Verse 33 says, they fear the Lord. It's only a mouth. It's superficial. There's no salvation in the foundation of I fear the Lord, I fear the Lord. In reality now, in verse 34, they fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob. Come, he named Israel. Look at Psalm 106. Psalm 106, verse 35. But they were mingled among the heathen, and they learned their works. They were mingled among the heathen, and they learned their works. Their fellowship with the heathen, with the pagan, with the idol worshiper, with the ones in darkness, and with the ones that do not have the standard of the word of God. And they say they have a reason. They say things have changed. I don't know where they launched that. That things have changed. And because of that, we cannot mingle with the heathen, with the unbelievers, and with the sinners, and with the people that do not have the righteous lifestyle of the people of God. They mingled among the heathen and they learned their works and they searched their idols, which were a snare unto them, a snare unto them. You will not fellowship with evil. You will not fellowship with the devil. If you fellowship with the devil, he will give you a mark, and that mark will hinder you from getting to heaven. You'll not get any mark from Satan. You'll not get any mark from any secret society. You will not come into agreement with the people that are just formal, formal. We know the Lord, we love the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And there is sin in their lives on dealt ways. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say, that the things with the gentle sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. If you're a child of God, you cannot have fellowship with God and fellowship with the devil at the same time. You cannot have fellowship with the light and with darkness at the same time. You cannot have fellowship with the righteous and the unrighteous at the same time. It says, I would not that ye should have fellowship with the devils. Now understand, in the houses in which we live, there are believers and unbelievers but they're just living there together. You're not in fellowship. In the offices, we'll walk in. You go to the office. Unbelievers come to that office. That's not fellowship. 
they come to work and you come to work to earn your living in the market in which you sell there are unbelievers there and the same thing there are believers who are selling in that same market you are not in fellowship together you are not contributing money to worship the idol of the market and in the prison we go to the prison to preach we're not in fellowship or the prisoners we go to teach them and preach the gospel to them because it said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's not fellowship it, you're doing your duty and you're coming out to assignment and there are communities there all over the world in schools in the schools in which we teach there are teachers who believe in the Lord there are teachers who don't believe in the Lord there are students who know the Lord there are students who don't know the Lord but we teach all of them both the Christian students and the unchristian students but that is not fellowship the same thing anywhere in the world a religious society a religious community a religious assembly we go there to teach that's not fellowship we will not be in fellowship and you will not be in fellowship with the devil in Jesus name look at verse 21 ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils at the same time ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils your hand will not be there your heart will not be there you will keep clear of any association with the devil and devil worshippers in Jesus name Ephesians chapter 5 in Ephesians chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 3 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints saints and sinners are not in fellowship saints and fornicators are not in fellowship saints and adulterers are not in fellowship saints and harlots are not in fellowship don't say now we're in fellowship together as we're in fellowship together we can practice any unclean thing no that doesn't come into fellowship with God verse 4 neither filthiness no foolish talking no jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks for this you know that no monger, no unclean person, no covetous man, covetous woman, covetous boy, covetous girl, who is an idolater worshiping money, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience you'll not be a child of disobedience you'll not be a perpetrator of disobedience you forgot your amen you will not be a carrier of disobedience to other people in Jesus' name. The wrath of God, the indignation of God, the judgment of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness in the past, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit 
is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness on any day at any time for any reason by any pretense have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret you'll not be a secret sinner you'll not be a secret criminal you'll be a child of God through and through in Jesus name let's come back to first John chapter 1 from verse 7 point number 3 now the freedom of the enduring fellowship of the godly, of the believer, of the saint, of the child of God. The freedom that comes from the enduring fellowship of the godly. First John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our many sins, from all sin. And then John is going to answer a question from his readers. If the readers were with him, one of them might say, but I have no sin to be cleansed. And you are saying that he will cleanse us from all sin. I'm all right. I have no sin. Verse 8. If we say we have no sin to be cleansed, to be taken away, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And the fellow says, now I realize like the whole of humanity, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is sin to be cleansed. How do I have that cleansed? How do I have the forgiveness and the freedom? That's what comes to us in verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And after that, we do not take the glory to ourselves. We do not go on telling people, pretending, since I was born into this world, I never, never, never sinned in my life. It says you cannot say that. Although you are forgiven, although you are cleansed, although you are set free, you were a sinner before you became saved. That's why verse 10 comes sin. If we say we have not sinned in the past, if we say we have never sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Verse 8 is for the pretending sinner who has not been born again. Verse 10 is for the proud church man, church woman, who is also pretending I've never sinned. Verse 9 is the truth of our salvation. You confess your sin, you forsake your sin, he will forgive. 
he will cleanse and he will take unrighteousness away from your life if he has not done it today he will do it in jesus name but understand this age is not to be repeated every time you are praying in your quiet time in your personal life in the family devotion if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us children of god are those who have confessed and forsaken and they have locked the door against sin and they now continue living in righteousness and that verse 8 is not repeated in every chapter of first john verse 8 is not repeated in every chapter of the acts of the apostles they came together they had been washed they had been cleansed in the acts of the apostles and you look at the prayers recorded there they don't repeat in every prayer every meeting day they have sinned no they were free from sin look at chapter 2 of first john verse 1 chapter 2 verse 1 my little children these things write i unto you that ye sin not these things write we unto you that ye sin not the one that is going to adultery and fornication and then coming back every week oh lord i've sinned oh lord you know i'm weak and this is the problem of my life i've sinned again if i say i have no sin i deceive myself the truth is not in me oh lord forgive me and then they go back that same week and they go into that dead here abominable act again and they come back the following sunday oh lord i've seen again uh, maybe they're stealing i've stolen again their criminals have committed crime again i've used the internet i've duped somebody again forgive me those are not christians those are church goers when you become a christian these things right we unto you that ye sin not look at that verse again chapter 2 verse 1 my little children converts believers these things write i unto you that you see not not that chapter 2 look at chapter 3 chapter 3 we're looking at verse 5 we know that he was manifested to take away our sins is to take away our sins and is to transform our lives and in him is no sin in him is no sin somebody say amen, amen. verse 7 little children let no man deceive you with misinterpretation he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committed sin, tell me, he that goes on sin, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And they think they are quoting the scriptures. They are misquoting the scriptures. They are misinterpreting the scriptures. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Give me a good amen. amen. You come to the Lord, you're in contact with the Lord, you're in fellowship with the Lord. Every work of the devil will be destroyed in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. He gives the grace, he gives the strength, he gives the power that you live a victorious life, you will be victorious. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Any amen? amen? Whosoever, who is that whosoever? I said, who is that whosoever? You remain free. Amen. You remain victorious. Amen. You remain more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Amen. Whosoever is born of God 
does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. That seed came in the moment you were truly born again. And it abides there. It remains there. And it says, the seed remains in you. The word remains in you. And it cannot sin because he is born of God. He is born of God. I am born of God. Look at chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. They will not overcome you. Sinners will not overcome you. Their sins will not overcome you. Satan will not overcome you. The works of the devil will not overcome you. Society will not overcome you. Their lawlessness will not overcome you. You have got little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say greater is he that is in me. The one inside you is greater than the temptress or the tempter in the world you will overcome. The one that is trying to force you into evil, the one that lives on the inside of you will be greater in Jesus' name. Greater power, greater strength, greater anointing, greater love, greater victory living inside you you must be an overcomer you are an overcomer in jesus name because greater you see that is in you than he that is in the world in your village you will overcome in your community you will overcome with the one that is living inside your house and is a worker for Satan and he wants to be luring you and bringing you down every time and say, you've come back from church, welcome. I've been waiting for you. Let's go and commit sin together, commit crime together. You will stand up and look at him and look at her eyeball to eyeball and you will say, the greater one is inside me. And she will know and he will know that the greater one pulls you over and you'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. <laughs> Temptation will not overcome you. Sin will not overcome you. Tradition will not overcome you. Religion will not overcome you. Tyrants will not overcome you. Because greater you see, that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at chapter 4, verse 17. Chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. You will have boldness in the day of judgment. Look up here. If today, when tempters come, you don't have boldness. If today, when criminals come to you and they want to teach you the way of crime, you don't have boldness to say no. If today, seeing in your community, looking at you, pointing at you, wanting to pull you down. You don't have boldness to stand. On the day of judgment, you will not have boldness. You fail for every temptation. 
and you failed for everyone that wanted to deceive you and lure you and you didn't have any backbone you couldn't say no you were not bold on the day of judgment you will not be bold you will be ashamed on the day of judgment and you will look at all the people that made you to fall that kept you in degradation and sin you will look at their nothingness you'll be ashamed of yourself that you got to hell because of this because of this one because of that one god forbid herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because read it because read it because say it aloud because say it with confidence because when Christ comes to you and he comes to live in you he gives you himself he gives you his power he gives you his victory he gives you his authority there is nothing that you need to live the victorious life that has not given to you because as he is so are we in this world as he is so are we in this world you must have the victory every time in jesus name look at chapter 5 first john chapter 5 verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of god sinners not we know we know from the scriptures we know we know from christ we know we know from the apostles we know we know by the preaching we're hearing that is faithful to the scripture we know we know by experience it has happened to us we have overcome we're overcoming and we will continue to know the victory you will continue to have the victory we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but that he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not are you there that wicked one toucheth me not are you there when you go to the village that wicked one toucheth me not when you go on the road and you see those people who are advertising themselves i'm inviting you you can come you can take me in your car and take me anywhere we know that that wicked one touches him not when the people who are committing crime and they're sharing money and they say i oh, want to share the money with you and we're asking for your bank accounts want to transfer something there what do you say i'm not part of that again i've come out of that and i've made my life right and cleansing the blood of the lamb and now that wicked one touches me not when he's coming with his hiv and with his uh, AIDS, HIV AIDS, and is coming uh, with his disease, and is coming uh, with his premature death, and is saying, uh, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm going to give you something, uh, and this one will kill you. We say, we know that that wicked one uh, touches me not. His sickness will not touch you. His sin will not touch you. His abomination will not touch you. The blood of Jesus will keep you clean. The blood of Jesus will protect you. 
the fire of the Holy Ghost will surround you in Jesus' name. They will not touch you. Evil will not touch you. Sin will not touch you. Sickness will not touch you. Calamity will not touch you. Premature death will not touch you. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Is she there today? Is she there today? And then, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one, that evil one, that demonic one, that devilish one, that satanic one, that society man, that occultic woman, touches you not. You are free from today. Rise up and enjoy your freedom. Rise up and enjoy your freedom. That's the benefit of fellowship with God. You come into fellowship with God and you are free. You come into fellowship with God and your life is preserved and protected. And that wicked one touches him not. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, make sure that your foundation of fellowship, eternal fellowship, spiritual fellowship, lively fellowship, ongoing fellowship, permanent fellowship, fellowship with God. Make sure that that fellowship is intact. You have turned away from sin. You have repented of every form of sin. And you have said no more. Sinning no more. Compromise no more. Drinking no more. Smoking no more. Womanizing no more. Adultery, no more. Fornication, no more. Iniquity, no more. Abomination of the world, no more. Little sins, you confess and forsake. Occasional sin, you confess and forsake. Who knows the last sin? You'll commit if you're always committing sin once in a while, once in a while, and then the rapture will take place, and you miss it, and you are lost. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, expose your life, expose your thoughts, expose your character, expose your conduct unto God, and say, God, here is who I am. I don't want any dot of sin, any stain of sin, any spot of sin, any secret sin, any besetting sin, any willful sin, any presumptuous sin, whoever remain in my life, you confess and you forsake. And if there's any sin partner, that's always joking about sin, making sin light, and making you to commit sin, to tell lies, to do evil, any sinner, sin partner, that makes you to forget yourself, and you go by the law of that sin partner, and you forget the law of God, you tell the Lord, you report yourself to the Almighty God and say, Lord, I will remain clean, remain pure, and sin shall not have dominion over you. God is light. In Him, there's no darkness at all. If you are walking in darkness and you're still saying you're in fellowship with God, you lie and do not the truth. No darkness in your life anymore. If you are born again, 
God is love. And there's no hatred at all in him. If you say you have fellowship with him, and you live and walk and abide in hatred and bitterness, you lie and do not the truth. God is holy, and in him is no sin at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and live in sin, walk in sin, trade in sin, we we'll lie and do not the truth. Sin must be something of the past. God is pure. And in him is no impurity at all. If you say you have fellowship with God and live in impurity with a girl, with a boy, live in impurity with a man, live in impurity with a woman, Living in purity with a co-worker in your office, you lie and do not the truth. Where God is, you'll find holiness and purity there. God is just, and in Him. Is no injustice at all. If you say you have fellowship with God and your life is unjust, unequal, unrighteous, unholy, and people talk about you in your area. He says it's a deeper life member and we have not seen anybody as corrupt as unjust as insincere as himself as herself then you lie and do know the truth God is true and in him is no falsehood at all. If you say you have fellowship with him and you lie, even in the church, lie. While worshiping, lie. While preaching, lying. Lying to your wife, lying to your husband, lying to your pastor, lying to the members. If we say we have fellowship with him and we live in falsehood and lying, we're liars, we do not the truth. God is faithful. And in him is no faithfulness. If we say we have fellowship with him and we are unfaithful in money matters, you have to deposit money for the church, you are unfaithful. You have to preach the word of truth and the word of life. You're unfaithful. If we say we have fellowship with him and live in falsehood and unfaithfulness, or we'll lie and do not the truth. Make sure of your salvation. 
make sure of Christ living in you, the greater one abiding in you, keeps you free from sinning. upholds you in righteousness destroys the power of the tempter in your life and the greater one lives on the inside of you the one that drags people down into sin will not touch you Victory, freedom, dominion, triumph, more than a conqueror, all through your life. Our God is able. We keep free from sin. free from sickness, free from satanic affliction, free from occultic oppression, free, free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Victorious children of God, free children of God, overcoming children of God, mighty, powerful children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have come into fellowship with the Heavenly Father, and your fellowship will not be substandard in Jesus' name. Amen. Every blessing of God will flow into your life. Amen. Power in your life. Amen. Authority in your life. Amen. Joy in your life. Amen. And the goodness of the Lord flowing into your life every time, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything you have heard today is that your joy may be full. Amen. Your joy will be full. Amen. Solution to every problem in your life. Amen. Victory every area of your life. Amen. Transformation every area of your life. Amen. Power every area of your life. Amen. Sustaining ability of God every area of your life. Fulfillment of his promise every area of your life. The Lord has lifted you up out of darkness. You'll not go back to darkness anymore. In Jesus' name. Victorious I am. Victorious I am. I am free. I'm free indeed. I am in fellowship with the Almighty God. The benefits of fellowship are mine. The benefits of fellowship are mine. The benefits of fellowship are mine. If that's you, raise up your hand. What are you? The benefits will be yours in Jesus' name. Power in your life in Jesus' name. Strength in your life in Jesus' name. And the goodness of the Lord will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. And when the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall raise up the righteous saints and we who are alive will be caught up together with them, you will be there. And we will continue in fellowship with God forever and ever in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. We glorify you. You are mighty God. You are holy God. 
and yet you have called us into fellowship with all humility with all sincerity with all confidence with all boldness with all faith we come into fellowship with you our god and we pray every wall of demarcation between you and us demolish them in jesus name we pray for those who have confessed and forsaken their sins forgive all their sins without any guilt remaining in jesus name and for all your children give us total freedom abiding freedom total fellowship without any cloud or any darkness between us in jesus name any sin that hinders fellowship with god take it away from every life in jesus name now as we come into fellowship with you and we abide in fellowship with you and the greater one lives on the inside of us every weakness go out in jesus name and all those tempters and all those people and all those entities and all those powers that will try to bring anything anything painful anything like a curse into any life we command you go out in jesus name for every brother every sister every member every minister every boy every girl victory in your life in jesus name and lord we pray real salvation that will go with us everywhere that will make us a conqueror everywhere you have granted to everyone already as you go the evil one will not touch you as you go the one that makes people to fall into danger and fall into death and fall into damnation he will not touch you as you go the one that comes to spoil your joy remove your joy and make you fall he will not touch you in jesus name lord protect everyone Purify everyone, preserve everyone, and let your victory go with everyone in Jesus' name. Go like the militant church of God, triumphant church of God. As you go, overcome the world, overcome the flesh, overcome the devil overcome every negative power that comes your way in jesus name be a conqueror be more than a conqueror be an overcomer be a triumphant man woman boy girl and let the victory of the lord in every area of your life abide in your life in jesus name the evil one will not touch your family will not touch the work of your hand will not touch your friends and their loved ones you are protected from now on total victory complete victory abide in victory in every one of your lives in jesus name I pray there will be a confirmation in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. Somebody there, I got it. Congratulations, you are blessed.